at the level of management, that is at the level of coaching, it's all about posturing. You know, it's, you have never really, it's only very humble coaches that will say, okay, we don't know, it may go either way, but most coaches love to sound big. And when you get to the pitch, of course, the pitch is the leveler. At the end of 90 minutes or thereabout, you know who so, will. So you can sound big and look small on the pitch. That is the truth. And of course, when uh, Olise was coming, I, uh, I remember uh, the, NF, the NFF, yeah. mm -hmm. the chairman, the, the young man from Delta State, he said that uh, Pep Guardiola that, uh, was coming to Nigeria. It's not like that. Football is not arithmetic. You just have to do it well. And you don't blame the coaches all the time because no matter how good you are as a coach, you work with the materials available for you and you work within the conditions too available. And so Olisa may be trying his best, but uh, maybe his best is not adding up to good results. All right. <laughs> Let's see what we have next, and that is Nigerian Tribune. And the big news on the front page with that picture there is uh, Arik Fayoshe Arik Bishola in dramatic makeup. Yoruba agenda interest should be paramount. Fayoshe, the war is over. Arik Bishola is all on page two. But we'll leave that and take on this. So, Oye Diji's claim to Olubadon throne exercise in futility. This is from the governor. Uh, uh, Governor Jimobi, uh, uh, that, that's the throne. Uh, well, uh, you expect it. Like I was raising this point with a friend yesterday. You know, in the Southwest, the kingship is not hereditary. Unlike it is in uh, part of the South South. So you don't have this hot contest. So they have ruling houses? Yes, yeah, they have ruling houses. Like uh, if... Uh, if we're going to have uh, the, a new Oba of Benin, for instance, it's known right from maybe, right from birth, who will become the next Oba of Benin. So you don't have this hot contest coming up. But in the Southwest, everybody will lay claim, especially when you have several ruling houses. Even the Olu, I mean, um, the Oni that was just installed recently, there were contentions until things were leveled up. So we expect it too, but uh, in the end, the one with the best claim will take it. <laughs> or the one that is uh, most able. So your answer will be, may the best man win. <laughs> uh, well, because it's already a contest. So we should give it to the, the best man in the sense that uh, the one who is the, who is the most Prime, given all the conditions, given all the factors, <coughs> the truth, uh, maybe the politics of it, the acceptability, everything put together. The By one, the gods too. Yes, and where, well, of course. <laughs> this other one, Lassa Fever, undergraduate, 18 others under watch in Ogun. Yeah, when you open, you open with Lassa Fever, you were talking that, uh, is it because, uh, I think it was my that I was talking that, is it because Lassa Fever is curable? That's why we are not paying attention. Just as we are not paying attention to malaria, and not paying attention to typhoid fever. You know, when I was growing up, I never had anything called typhoid fever. In fact, I had the name first in my university days. We thought that every kind of ma uh, fever was malaria fever. Now we're having this uh, Lassa fever and Ebola that was even a more serious affair. The way it was contained was phenomenal. And Nigeria actually was applauded by the international community. And uh, for the first time, US was looking like coming to Nigeria to learn a thing or two about how to contain epidemic. <coughs> but this Lassa fever, I don't know. The only thing I hear is the professor who is health minister speaking hope, talking. I, I, I love listening to him because when I listen to him, I just, something in me will say, yes, we are getting somewhere. But it's all about talking. Uh, we don't know what, the, even the advocacy is not as it was when uh, we had uh, Ebola fever. Uh, the uh, uh, was mentioning that what about the culture of hand washing and things like that? We don't even get to 
if it is through the newspaper, many people will read the newspaper, through the medium, uh, the television, radio, and what are the precautions people should take to avoid this? We hear it is caused by a rat. So, uh, you know, I don't know how many houses in Nigeria that we don't have rats, uh, no matter how clean the environment, because that is what it is. Rats are everywhere. So what, how do we battle the rats? What do we do? Has government even done anything about even, uh, let's say, fumigation? Say, okay, on the basis of this, we want to do something. You know, in Lagos, they declared the war on rats and they, they say they killed... The they war has not got into my place because said, I've not seen any yesterday, war. Yesterday, they were in the market your place space. here in Lagos? Yes. In the, in the market space. <laughs> I hope you don't even hear it. <laughs> Thanks, Suleiman. But in the market spaces, they said uh, that they had killed over 4,000 rats. I mean, some papers put it at 7,000, but generally it was about over 4,000 rats killed in Lagos markets. Markets. When was the war waged? The rats, you know, they move in the night. Were they doing the war in the night or in the daytime? See, they talk. No, they, they, People, they, they, they just they, talk too much. We, we saw some of them. They, they called pressmen for some of these things. You saw the dead rats. In some cases, we saw them planting the... Um, Poison. Or the soldiers fighting the rats. You saw them planting let's the take, poison. Let's just take, one more. The let's take one more with Trivian before we drop <laughs> the, the daily. We won't devalue Naira. This is from CBN. Retains monetary policy interest rate at 11%. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, I don't even know what people also, what more they want of the Naira. Are you saying that the Naira is not devalued enough? The, the, the CBM may be holding official position that yes, the Nara still exchanges at uh, 197 to a dollar. Yeah, you may hold on to that position. Whether that position is realistic or not, but that is the official position. And every other layer of the market react to that official position. Even the so-called black market. What the CBN is saying in effect is that if we officially announce a further devaluation, say the Naira now exchanges for 200 to a dollar, mm. is going to cascade and affect other layers of uh, uh, the market, the, 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 the interbank and then uh, the talk of the so-called black market that they are trying to really fix. Uh, I I, I, I'm going to take it, I'm going to have to cut you and take it quickly to The Guardian and I'll tell you why. Uh, because The Guardian is talking money this morning and it's very related to what Suleiman was talking about. Uh, hope deems on 170 billion Naira Abuja Kaduna Rail project. That's what you find there. Hope deems on that project. Chinese firm delays delivery, cites exchange rate issues. You assume that this is the newest excuse in town? Yes. Um, you know, once everything is denominated in dollars, and if you gave a contract uh, six months ago, denominated in dollar, and you see the Naira sliding against the dollar. Of course, every contractor will ask for what we usually call in contractual agreement variation. And if that variation is not discussed, the contractor will have reason to say, look, I can no longer deliver on these conditions. Yeah, but these companies should be able to get official exchange rates, shouldn't they? Uh, the other point to also find out is when the contract was signed, there was the official exchange rate, 197 to a dollar. Mm. Big question. Well, page six is where you find details on whether or not, you know, <laughs> the, exchange, the official exchange rate um, had been devalued as at that time. But MPC retains interest rate at 11%. Bank cash reserve rate still 20%. Page seven is where you find details. How the Suki paid Metu for security services in parenthesis there by a witness. And then you also find this last one here. Why Southeast Governors Forum is moribund. Uh, that's somebody speaking. Uh, stakeholders want it scrapped. Southeast Governors Forum. Uh, well, which of the forums, which of the forums is not moribund now? Uh, is the Nigeria Governors Forum moribund? I don't even know whether that one is as active. When last did they meet? And did you hear? They met last year. Uh, I think they were supporting the, the NCC on MTN fines and they wanted MTN to pay their fines. You know, we, we used to know what the Governors Forum was. I mean, we, when uh, Governors Forum Actually, what brought about all the politics of uh, 2013, 14, it started from Governors Forum. But today, you just have the Governors Forum 
when uh, Saraki was there, I remember there was something they said, peer review mechanism. They wanted to use the forum to at least ensure good governance. And they abandoned all of that and we are doing a lot of things. You talk of the South South Governors Forum or you think there is a forum there too. You have the South West Governors Forum. Are these forums really necessary? So, um, are they doing us any good? They are not, but that is what you call politics. It's just groupings and angling for something bigger. They also have uh, Governors Wives Forum. Oh yes. Interesting. And now, you know, without the First Lady now, some of these ones are not as vibrant as they used to be and it's good for us it's less distraction let us focus on main issues mm -hmm. in this country but well, that'll be so, for the guardian let's take a look at this day well they go back to money matters cbn resists further devaluation of naira that's a big late story on the front page but the writers it may feel there are handy options to address oil price volatility